Hey everyone and welcome back to Art a la Carte and in this episode I'm going to try to teach you how to draw a golden retriever dog and then I'm going to fail miserably. Okay, maybe not miserably, but as I'm progressing through this drawing, I realize that there are some things off that don't make it look like an exact purebred golden retriever dog. But I thought I would still show you this video because it did still turn out to be a really good picture, and I thought it would be good for you guys to see how I deal with my art when it doesn't turn out the way I see it in my head. You see, we're all our own worst critics. We know exactly what we want our picture to look like. We can see it, and so when it doesn't turn out, all we see is the mistakes. When people look at our picture, they go, ah, oh, I see the final product, which they have no clue what we intended it to be, so they judge it on what it is, which usually is never as bad as what we think it is. We just think of it being not what I wanted. I hope you find this video encouraging, entertainment, and helpful. Let's get started. I get a lot of requests for tons of different dog breeds, and I really try to take the one that I get the most requests for that specific dog breed. So if there is a breed that you would like to see in an upcoming video, let me know in the comment section below. And again, I just take the most popular and I try to do those. So one that rises to the top, along with many others, but this one has been asked for several times, um, is a golden retriever. Um, so let's get started. I'm going to do the initial sketch out with this red uh, Prismacolor color erase pencil and I get a lot of questions of why I draw with this color pencil and it's just a lot of times um, it gives something different for you to look at. I really like it just because not, it doesn't smear so I can run my hand over my drawing and it's not going to smear everywhere so that's why I use it but you don't have to have this to of course make your drawing. Um, you can just draw with whatever. So like I do with um, every single one of my drawings and did in my little practice, um, I build everything up using my shapes. And I do this really quickly and I'm going to lay them in and then I'm going to come back in and explain. So here I have my initial shape. Now this isn't the same that I do in most of my videos. In most of the videos I'll say we'll draw a circle here for the head and a circle here for the nose and then come down here, a circle for the chest. Um, and that's that's the step you take when you're first beginning to learn how to draw. You want to really find those big shapes in there. After you get a little bit more confident in being able to see those shapes in there, you want to switch from putting in those very just solid shapes in there to branching out to what's called gesture drawing. And I've talked a little bit about this in some of my different videos. Gesture drawing is all about capturing the motion and the shape rather than the actual line. So you'll see that all of my lines are really light, really smooth, and they're all over the place. Um, I'm not worried so much about erasing. I mean, I do erase a little bit, but I'm not going to go, if I don't like a line, erase the whole leg and then redraw the line. What I'll do is I will draw until I find that leg, and then I might go and clean up some of the lines that um, I made that I didn't like but you're not stopping your flow. And I'm looking at little things like the distance between where the head comes down, the eye line comes down. So you'll notice when I first drew this, my head was back a little bit further and I thought, no, that head's sitting way too far back. It's making the chest look a little bit too puffed out. And so I checked where my eye line was, how where it comes down and it comes down about where the toes of the feet end is where it comes out. So instead of erasing my head, I just went ahead and just pushed that forward and then I went back and kind of cleaned up some of that. Um, but you want to just sketch, sketch, sketch it lightly until you get that shape in here. And you also see that in my sketch I have um, my lines for their bones written, drawn in here to help me get that line in there. And if you want a little bit more detail on how to get the skeletal structure of this, I have several um, dog drawing tutorials, um, especially with wolves. I kind of went into a little bit more detail with my wolf drawings on how you know how the mass of the of the chest is the backbone the hips where the, the lines for the legs come out but just simplify that all down there but we're just looking for, to get this kind of really nice shape here so once you have the sketch the way you like it i'm going to go ahead now and switch over to a pencil and i'm going to begin to apply in my details now normally what i would do for a finished drawing is i would really erase this pull up as much of this as i possibly can clean up my drawing because I don't want to do that once my pencil lines are in there. And now this is the part of the drawing where now you're going in for the detail. You're going in for that precise line because you have the mass, the body, the shape the way you want it. So now we can start doing that. And I'm going to start using those just flicks of my pencil to create kind of that texture of fur. 
So instead of just drawing this straight line around here for the dog's ear, I'm just going to flick my pencil the way the hair might grow. Tough it out anytime there's kind of a bend, so like the ear is bending down this way. I'm going to tuft out a couple little hairs there and then follow them down along there. And our eye will translate that as hair. Up here on the top of the head, it's a little bit shorter, so I'm not going to flick it as much. Coming along down here to the nose. This is a great part when you're drawing. Um, I don't know if you like to listen to music. This is uh, just where it's just soothing and calm to me. I just like to put on some music and listen to it and just really be able to focus. Um, there's sometimes when I'm drawing that I can have people talk to me and I can have a conversation with them. And there's other times that I just need to kind of go into my own world and just focus on what I'm drawing. Whatever makes this drawing process enjoyable for you. This is the part of the fun part of being an artist is just how relaxing it is to draw. Gentle music helps you. Listen to gentle music. Being in silence is comfortable for you. Just go someplace nice and quiet. If you like to have conversations with people, you know, sit at your dining room table where the family is and talk to people or call some people on your phone and chat with them on speaker while you're drawing. Every artist is different. Every artist kind of finds their own little niche of how they best work. And don't feel that you have to put yourself into, you know, the same mold as other artists. You know, oh, this is my favorite artist and they listen to, you know, classic Bach or Beethoven while they draw, so I have to, you know. this drawing I'm saying to myself this isn't a golden retriever you know, everybody makes mistakes in fact right now as I'm looking at this drawing I'm realizing this is not going to be a golden retriever as much as I want this dog to be a golden retriever he's not going to be one and the reason is is because when I was doing my initial setup I measured this line here boom down and here and here. I measured all these lines down here. Got that up there. But I did not measure his headline. And his head needs to be right about there. So I could erase this and put his head in there. His head's a little big. Um, but I put so much dark pencil lines in this that it's going to ruin my paper. So this is the point where you could be like, ah, oh, I want to draw a golden retriever, and it's not a golden retriever. I'm so frustrated. Crumple, crumple, toss. I'm done. Or you could say, you know, but this is still an okay drawing. It's not a golden retriever. I can no longer, you know, when I go to edit this video and put it online, I won't be able to say, hey, look, I'm going to teach you guys how to draw a golden retriever. I'll have to say, I look, I'm trying to draw a cross mutt breed that has a little golden retriever in him, but not fully. Um, but he's still a good dog. I mean, he's like he's like the old yeller, you know. He's he's gonna go and help Timmy when he falls down the well, and and you know he's gonna sleep on the end of your bed and keep you warm and bark when. The, burglar comes, you know, he's your best friend just because he's not a purebred. So his, you know, father was a golden retriever and his mother was a beagle. He's okay with that. No hating on the picture now. It's all right. That's the fun part about art. Sometimes the picture does not turn out exactly as you wanted it. If you wanted a golden retriever to be exactly guaranteed first time, yeah, golden retriever, then the only way to guarantee that 
is either to practice a ton until you're very confident in drawing your golden retrievers or get a camera and take a photo of a golden retriever. But until then, you know, even as much as I've practiced this, you know, it doesn't always turn out and that's okay. A little bit of, and maybe he's a little lab, long haired lab, a lab and a golden retriever. I think labs have kind of a shorter neck. All right, so you guys have to give him a name. You guys who follow me on Instagram got to help me name my Celine picture. So I will let you guys here on YouTube name this puppy. So give me your um, ideas of what his name should be in the comments. And I will choose one of them and then name him in the title after a little while. When I find the one I want, then I'll put his name in the title so if this pup doesn't have a name in the title he hasn't been named yet go ahead and put your suggestions down there so how about champion champion he's anything but we could call him tiger but there's no fight in him tiger pff, kittens could fight in him rover why not think it over rover is the perfect name for this dumb looking dog Sandy, Sandy's his name, if you please. If you don't believe me, ask any one of the fleas. Residing on Sandy, true he ain't pedigreed Sandy. There ain't no better breed and he really comes in handy. Especially when you're all alone in the dark and you're small and terribly frightened at Sandy. that while you're drawing your pictures that when it comes to a point that you realize ah this isn't what I wanted it to be that instead of getting frustrated mad give up tear your paper up throw it away they'll just stop and go okay it isn't what I wanted it to be but it is something is it something that I can still use keep pushing looking at it working with it don't get frustrated and even if it is something that is totally not savable that you learn something just like I learned from this drawing the next time I go to draw a golden retriever dog I'm going to pay more attention to the size of the head and the length of the neck that's something that I learned even though I've been drawing for 30 plus years every time I draw I still learn new things but it's only if you're willing to learn from your mistakes I don't learn half as much from getting things correct as I do from getting things wrong well, thank you guys for hanging out with me and for sharing this small little adventure in my art journey. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. I post new videos four times a week, so there's always something new coming up around the corner. Thank you guys for hanging out with me. Until next time, God bless you guys, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.